And I'm going to welcome you guys to our Outplay Remembrance uh, Inspiration. Um, so this was the Outplay collection that I did just before Christmas. Um, it, we have a number of different products. I'm going to go through those first. So um, obviously this is the, the core collection and this includes the art play palette. And then we have the matching photo blends, clipping masks, which allows you to blend your photos quickly and easily into the papers in the art play palette collection. We've got a fun artsy template, which you can use to create a simple layout design where you can kind of extract those layers and use them to create another um, other layout designs. So maybe we'll do that today. There's uh, a bunch of word art, which is all important when you're in a, when you're in a, memory, a memory keeper. And then um, some fun multimedia elements, which you can use as is, or you can kind of extract pieces and create your own. And then we have our bonus collection. And then um, I also have extras that we add on here. So these are the artsy cards the artsy transfers. Um, and for those of you that are new around here, the artsy transfers are sort of like transfers, except for they're delivered in PSD format. So that allows you to, again, have a little bit more customization and flexibility with the different layers um, in those transfers. Um, and I do try to make them different from the transfers that exist within the art play palette. Art play palette, palette. Gosh, I can't speak today. Um, and then I put in these hipster plumes. These were a request from a customer and then also some of these fun um, brushes. So um, just kind of a closer look. Here's the art play palette collection. We have the artsy template, the photo blends clipping masks, and then the elements, the words, and then uh, we looked at the companion set. So we'll be dipping into a number of these. Now, before I wanna get started actually creating layouts, I wanna try something new today. Typically I create the three layouts and then I forget to show you my team's layout. So I'm gonna show you the team layouts first so I don't forget them. So I have a number of layouts. This is not all of the layouts that they've created. It's just happens to be the ones that I have managed to capture. But I just wanted to go through. I think it's helpful to see some inspiration. Joan used the collection to sort of celebrate the new year. So she used these fun different text elements, type elements to create a celebration of, of 2022. I love how she's used the um, angel wings as a focal point and a number of the different clocks in different places. So you can see how she's used multiple copies of those clocks for emphasis. And then the way that she has typed those letters and rotated them, they sort of align with the shape of the underlying paper. And then we have two different layouts from Adrienne. She does a lot of heritage style pages. And you can see, um, I love how she's used the frame here to draw focus to some of the snapshots in the transfers in the background. I think that that's super effective. Notice also too how she's used this art stroke to draw the eye to this young man in the back of the photo, photo here. Um, and then we've got the repetition of all the circles within the splatters, the transfers, the red dots, even some of the art strokes down here. So I love how she's got that continuing theme of the circles running horizontally through her page. She's done something quite similar with this second um, layout. I love how she's used that glasses element to um, encircle the face of her subject. And again, the use of those graphic circle dots creates a really nice visual triangle, which frames the composition. Notice too how she has used the frame as well to draw the eye to a certain area of that particular transfer. So lots of fun, unique little bits and pieces happening in this layout, but a very solid design um, using my all time favorite visual triangles. And of course, if you guys are new to visual triangles, go ahead and go to my website. If you go to the store, you can check out my relatively new class. This was released at the end of last year, but this mastering visual triangles and layouts is really cool. It's not really just visual triangles, but it really gives a lot of guidance on, on, on where to place layouts in your layout design so that you're not just guessing all the time and you're actually basing those decisions on um, recognized design principles. And then a layout here from uh, Linda, 
she has used some letters, which I think is, is lovely, um, in order to create the focal point for her layout design. And I love her use of red. Notice how those splashes of red draw the eye and lead the eye through the design. And I talk a lot about that in that class that we were just looking at um, at my website. The next one is from Charlene. She's more of a digital artist, I would say. I love how she's used um, some of the elements to extend the subject matter of her photos. So this um, silver paint transfer here sort of becomes the breast of her bird and this extends into some of these other elements. She's also mixed and matched some of these. So notice how she's changed the color of some of these elements and the multimedia elements are really good for that. They allow you to go in and change individual parts of those elements so that you can customize them uh, to coordinate with the colors or the subject of your layout design. Uh, this one is from Kathy, and I love that she's included a photo of herself here. Um, definitely, you know, don't forget to take photos of yourself. It's a bit weird. I haven't taken any selfies in a while. They're still kind of a bit uncomfortable to me, but um, I do appreciate it down the road when I look back at my layouts from previous years and I see pictures of myself. I'm really glad I made that effort. So I love that Kathy does that. Um, it's really cute how she's used that glasses element on her face. Um, and I love the repetition within the photo monitors there. Um, so just a really fun layout about herself here. And then Dorsey's taken this um, collection and she's recolored it um, and she's kind of turned it to blue and that coordinates really well with the photos that she's working with here. Notice how she's used those brushes, those notebook brushes. Um, to kind of create a guide for her word art. And in this case, it actually happens to be some of the word art from the word art set. So just kind of heading back here, here are the brushes, um, the notebook brushes. It's taken its time to show up. Let's see if I can hurry that along a little bit. Doesn't want to preview it for us, but this one here, let's see if I can encourage this don't you just love it when things don't work like they're supposed to here we go let's open it up like that so you can see the brushes here um, and then of course we have the word art here so included with this word art um, there are these sort of quote brushes and so she took this quote here and then she added it to her layout um, to create this effect well now it's not going to work for me so Wonderful. Let's move on this way then. Uh, the next one is from Joan. I actually deconstructed this. So if you weren't at the latest AA Connect, the replay of that is available in the store. It's the first one here. Um, but if you click on here, you can see all of the different layouts that are available. And we actually went through and we deconstructed that. And I talked um, in length about that one. So I don't want to spend too much time on that, seeing as we um, are already have looked at it. Uh, another one from Kathy here. I love how she's used a, um, a wedding photo. You would never think to use a black background for a wedding photo, but I love how the whites pop against that. Um, it's a really nice effect. And of course, this element here with the champagne glass or the wine glass um, is pretty perfect for that. Completely different direction here. Um, Diane has used the collection as um, as part of her um, kind of daily daily layouts. So Diane creates a book where she creates these um, eight, eight by 10, I think, pages they are. Um, and she ends up with 350 plus pages by the end of the year. But this one obviously documents the, uh, the beginning of the year. Um, and I love how she's incorporated that with her photos. Notice how she's added in these red elements to provide a continuation of the berries in her focal photo. Um, this one is also from Darina, and I love how she's used the frame to frame a snapshot from her computer. So obviously this is a snapshot from her computer, um, um, her Photoshop. Um, and she's framed that and added it into the mix. And then she's also taken a snapshot or a, a screenshot of her files on her computer system. And she's blended that with the photo blends in the background. Um, two fun little groups of elements here sort of to create this visual triangle effect. And I really like the red text. I'm a big fan of pops of red, any kind of bright color that kind of draws the eye and creates visual interest is always 
a good idea. And her title um, effect here is also really fun. I actually uh, talked about how to do this in the last AA Connect. So if you want to know how to do this um, sticker effect, then go check out that last session. This one is from Nancy. Um, love how she's used the clock hand here, not only to um, encircle this date so you can actually change the date, but it also sort of points up here to this other area of interest and draws the eye up to the title. I really like too how she has used the photo, the, the glasses and she's recolored them and she's sort of created this overlay and blended them into a back into the background. So another really neat way to use those that glasses element. And then one from Michelle here. This was part of her project uh, 2021. Um, I forget. I think this was the beginning of the page, the first page or the last page. Um, I'm not sure if Michelle is here, but um, I love how she's incorporated this collection into the mix. I like how the brushwork, the white, how effective that looks over the darker colors of her photos. Um, and she is she has become quite a master of creating these wonderful um, word art clusters. That's where you take the word art and you embellish it with the various elements. And she's also included this frame into the mix as well. And then moving on to this next one. This one is from um, Jerry, I believe, and her little dogs. And I love how she's used this paper um, texture at the top here to sort of create a space and a focal point for her journaling. And um, again, use of red to lead the eye through the design. This cluster is one of the clusters that's included with the multimedia elements. So that's pretty fun as well. And this one is from Esther. And Esther does a lot of kind of um, art journaling style layouts. So instead of using a photo as her focal point, she uses an element. And in this case, she's used the clock. I like how she has created her title and she's got that title sort of running around the circumference of that clock. And then she's got these other circle elements in place here uh, to create repetition of those circles. Um, and I really like how she has kind of created this date. Notice how it's sort of flipping from one to two and she's recolored in that in red too. So we've got, again, that really nice visual triangle effect. This one we uh, kind of broke down, I deconstructed in detail in the last AA Connect session, but uh, this basically Dorina uses um, clipping masks in order to create this really fun foundation for her layout design. And then I think this is the last one. This is from Mikey. This is a graduation photo, obviously. Um, and again, love how she's used those glasses to encircle some of the text. And she's used the red in a visual triangle format to lead the eye around the design. Um, just really love this collection. I love the, the graphic components of the circles um, against the more traditional kind of dark pieces of the paint. Um, I love the pinks and the, the reds and the blacks. So a couple of things going on here in the chat box. I just want to check to make sure that um, there is nothing too uh, crazy. Lots of different kind of welcomes from various places and um, different reports of the weather, which I always love. So thanks for sharing those. Okay, so I believe that is our last layout. Um, so I'm now going to go ahead and start thinking about creating something. And again, I don't plan this, so it's really just kind of what kind of comes together. So we'll see what transpires. And typically, I like to start with the um, art play, um, not the art play palette, but the artsy template. And the reason I like to use the artsy template is because it, it's kind of an easy starting point and it gets the, uh, the creative juices sort of flowing. So if you're not really sure where to start, this is always a good place. So I'm going to open this up and you have various options here. I mean, you can use it as is, but you can also play around with maybe rotating this template. So I could go to image, image, rotate, and then maybe rotate it by clockwise. And that kind of just gives us a little bit of a different perspective. Um, and then from there, you can start playing around. Obviously, we have to straighten up the text. So maybe I'm going to go and I'm going to transform this anti-clockwise just so that we have the text running in the correct direction and we want to make sure that that fits on our design. And then I'm gonna do the same thing 
with the other two. I wonder if I can do these at the same time. Always edit, transform and rotate. So yeah, so you can select multiple layers. Um, and then this gives you the option then to kind of change around the orientation of that text. And you can also do the same thing with the photo frames too. So I don't know if you're like me, but I take a lot of photos using my um, iPhone and they tend to be in portrait mode. So this time I've selected these layers that kind of make up these frames and I'm just gonna manually rotate them like this and then maybe bring those up here. So you can kind of just start moving things around and getting them to sort of fit a different format. But I tend to like portrait style uh, frames mainly because of the orientation of my images. So I'm gonna do the same thing with these and just rotate these around and maybe have this up here like that. So you can see how we've used that template to kind of create this fun heart shape. Um, and just kind of create something different. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and I could turn off any of these layers. So I could go ahead and, and remove any of these that I, are not serving me. Um, I can go ahead and I can change the color. So maybe I don't like the blue on that. Maybe I want to go to hue and saturation and I can start playing around with maybe making that a warmer color. I can also start bringing in some of the elements from my art play palette. So here's the papers. Um, this is where I typically start, both in creating these, these uh, collections and also in using them. And I don't know why it's not previewing, but that's really annoying. <laughs> so um, we have uh, four different artsy papers to play with. So I'm gonna have to open them up like this. Um, you can see super fun. Uh, designs here. This is the one that the um, artsy template is based off. And then a bunch of other different papers that you can use to create your own papers using the transfers and overlays. And of course, those look like this. They're typically included in the second part of the art play palette. And they sort of look like this. This one is, you can barely see it, but it's a, a bunch of numbers um, in white and then paper overlays, and then some fun paint. We've got some splatters, more, more splatters, different transfers. Um, all of these can are in PNG formats. So you can just drag and drop them into your designs. And then the, those are all of the ones. These are the um, numbers that I was talking about. And then you can see them like that. So um, one of the things that you can do is you can add these in. So maybe I want to, I gotta move these out the way. So maybe I wanna drag this in here. So I can start adding these transfers in and I can customize this space if I want to. Um, I can clip papers to any of these areas. Let's bring in that number because then you can see it really well. So maybe bring that into the mix and you can change the order of the layers. So when you change the order of the layers, you're gonna change how they appear on your composition. You can resize those layers by using the transform controls. So with that move tool selected, if you click on the corner point here, you're able to resize that. And again, maybe bring it up a little further. So we have it on top, quite a few layers here. So you might wanna bring it all the way up. That's probably a little too much. So you can play with the order of the layers. And then also to, you can bring in the papers. So let's go back to our first part and go into that papery. And maybe I'm gonna bring in these two dark colored papers and bring them over, drag these on top of that dark paint layer. So here's the black paint layer here. And then here is our, um, paper layer, and then you can go to layer, create clipping mask. So if I wanted to customize that, you can't really see too much of that. And then if I wanted to drag that paper in, this other paper in, into that clipping set, I can kind of turn off the visibility and switch back and forwards and I can move this around. So you can customize and create your own transfers by um, clipping the, the paper to various layers in the, um, in the template. 
So at this point, once I've kind of got a basic design, I'm going to start thinking about maybe adding a background paper. So maybe we'll try that one that we just brought in, that black paper. So that's an option. It's quite dark. Um, typically, when I'm adding papers, I will add in a couple of different options. So maybe we'll try this light gray and we'll try this blue and we can drag those into the background. Um, so I quite like the blue and the gray is nice too. So I could go either way. Maybe we'll just stick with the gray. Um, and then it's a matter of adding in our photo. So I like to bring my cursor kind of above all of the transfer layers, but below the frame layers. So I'm going to select that layer and then I'm going to go to our photo blends clipping masks, which are located here. And I usually include them into two different folders. This basically allows you to um, download them more quickly. Um, that is a problem for some people. They still have download uh, limitations and speeds. So I like to have um, those into two, two different folders. It makes the file sizes smaller. And then um, the number of the photo blends, they sort of line up with the papers. So number one photo blends coordinates with number one artsy paper. As I'm using the artsy paper number four, then I want to select the rem Remembrance uh, photo blends number four. And it's a tough one to say is that I was not thinking ahead. Um, and then because we rotated this, I probably want to think about rotating the actual photo blends too. So I'm going to go to image, image rotate. And then um, I think we did I can't remember, did we do clockwise or counterclockwise? I think it was clockwise. We can always change it if that's not the case. So that rotates the whole um, elements uh, 90 degrees clockwise, and then I can bring it in and place it. But, and that works actually pretty well, but you can kind of play around by rotating it this way using those transform controls to see which works best, actually works best this way. So once you have that in place, then you go and you look for your pictures. So um, I did not do any kind of um, prep work for this. And I'm going to be perfectly honest and tell you that I have not downloaded any pictures recently. <laughs> so they're still on my phone. But I do have some 2021 uh, photos and I do have some Christmas images. So hopefully here we'll be able to find something. So here's um, a photo of Ella and I. Um, not a great photo, but it works. Um, so let's bring this in and we'll use that as our main image um, and it was taken at night time so and it doesn't quite fit so I'm just going to expand it slightly so you're going to place the photo on top of the photo blends clipping mask layer and then you're going to go to layer create clipping mask and notice how the photo then conforms to the shape of that underlying layer and then you don't want to it's probably I've probably expanded this photo a little bit too much um, typically, I don't recommend you increase the size of your photos by more than 25%. Um, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go with this, though. And this has kind of a yellow hue on it. So I'm going to convert this to black and white by going to Image Adjustments Desaturate. And then I'm going to go to Image Adjustment Levels. If you're working in Elements, that's Enhance Adjust Lighting Levels. And you also have a different black and white feature underneath that same um, enhance menu as well. So I'm just going to adjust the shadows and the highlights to make that brighter. And if I want to bring in a little bit more detail on the face here, I can just select the brush, select a blending brush or a soft round brush, and I can just go in and just paint directly on the mask. And that's going to bring in some of the details of our people here. And you might want to play around with the size of the brush just to make that blended quite nicely. Um, you can also duplicate the photo layer. You can add different blending modes. I'm going to add a screen blending mode and a soft light blending mode, and that's going to make those layers pop um, just a little bit more. Um, and then it's just a matter of going in and adding your photos to these different, let's go ahead and close this out. So you can go in and add different photos here. So here's a picture of the Rocky Bear. We can add this one in. 
And this one's a bit blurry. You can see how I've stretched this photo too much. This is why you don't want to have uh, too much enlargement in an image, but it gives you a good idea of, um, of how this can be used. I'm going to close some of these layers out. We get too many things in the, there we go. So let's add the Rocky Bear up here. And I don't have too many photos um, that I want to put on this layout. So maybe we'll go ahead and we'll do curves this time. So if you're working in Photoshop, you can use curves as opposed to levels. It works pretty much the same way, um, works to edit your images. And then if you don't know what else to add into the frames, you can turn off the frames if you want to, or you can keep the frames and you can use the artsy cards. So I'm gonna go ahead and step back to our artsy cards. And so these come in three different sizes. We have the three by fours, we have the four by sixes, and then we have the six by sixes. So in this case, I'm gonna go and add in these three by fours. We'll drag them in, just two of them. And these can go directly over the masks and they work in the same way. And that's turn this one off for now, but um, you can go ahead and go to layer, create clipping mask, and that's gonna clip down. And then if you duplicate that layer and drag it down to the underlying frame layer, you can go to layer, create, create clipping mask, and then you can have that same image extend multiple frames. And then we'll go back up to this one. And then I think there's another frame down here. So this one can go here like this. Go to layer, create clipping mask. Um, and then I'm gonna switch out this title. So I usually use this area here as your title placement. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And now we can go and take a look at the different options that we have available for us um, in terms of the word art. So lots of different options here. We have this um, beaded threads, which is really fun. And then we have these different quotes that I've created, uh, the word art, and then the word transfers. And then we have these um, wooden words. And so what I like to do is to group together a couple of these and um, add them to kind of create a cluster. So, um, and oftentimes I will look to see kind of the space I have available. This is kind of the place where I thought the, the title would go, but it could actually go down here as well. And I could maybe put elements here. So this is sort of the area I'm looking at. Um, so let's go and see what would um, work here. So the best moments inspire joy, um, create any of these would kind of work. So let's go ahead and I'm going to select this one. Keep the memories alive. Let's go with that one. And then um, life. So I have three different uh, varieties of word art and I'm gonna drag them and add them to my layout and click on the check mark at the top of my screen or on the bounding box if you're working in elements to add all of those three elements to my design. And then I'm just going to start adding them to the actual composition. So I don't really love how that looks like that, but you do have the option to play around with different blending modes. So notice if I start adding color burn, or even linear burn, I quite like that. Um, then that knocks out the white background and allows that to exist um, a bit better. And then we have this title here, which we can't really see very well. So if I go to um, um, edit, fill, ensure you have that preserved transparency box checked, click on the contents box and then click on white, click okay. And we'll just move that above, then we can see that much better. And you have the option to sort of move it around. So maybe move it a little bit up so we can see that better. And of course, the closer I bring the word art to the people, uh, the more it's going to relate to that particular image. It's going to draw the eye to that. And then we can maybe bring this down the bottom here, drag it up to the top so it's not covered. And then go to layer, layer style, drop shadow. And it's going to come up. I like to have an angle of 120. I like to have it on linear burn at about 40% opacity. 
and then bring the size down um, so that it's not extended off the page quite so much. I, always, I usually like between five and eight. So I'm just gonna add in eight um, into both the distance and the size and click OK. And so uh, we have the foundation, we have our photos now, we have the words, uh, we have place for our journaling here, which we can kind of adjust. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is just add some fun embellishments. And so I talked about this fun area here and what that will do if I add elements here, it's gonna connect these photos to this focal point here. So I'm gonna go and look for our multimedia elements. So there's four different varieties here. Um, and so let's try a couple, I guess. Let's try this one. I don't think this one's gonna fit, but we bring it in. So when you're using these PSD files, you wanna drag them into the background so that you maintain all of these layers. So this allows me then to be able to turn off layers if I want to. Um, I can change the color of layers if I want to by going to that hue and saturation, um, wrong layer. So I can change the color if I want to. Um, I can also turn off the visibility of layers. So lots of different ways. I can rotate, I can resize. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility. If you drag these PSD files directly onto your canvas, you lose the ability to edit all of these different layers because it will be imported as a single layer. So I like to select all of the layers with the move tool from the tools panel, I'm just gonna un uncheck that auto select box. And then I'm just gonna drag this over into the mix here. And so we have the, I'm kind of moving it around. And as you can see, as I suspected, it doesn't really fit very well, but there are some interesting um, kind of shapes in this particular set. So I really like this sort of frame layer. And I'm interested in how that aligns with the background here. So you could play around with just kind of moving these different elements around um, just to see if by separating them, you could get a fun, so like that, for example. So I've added that below some of the layers that we just see the top portion of it. And then maybe um, we can maybe make this work. We could drag this up here like this and that fits pretty well. Maybe make it a little smaller the twine and the charm and the stitching, that could all potentially work. So notice now by moving these elements around, we're able to make them fit the area that we're working with. So we can add this in here like this. We obviously want to move this splatter off Ella's face. Um, we could even change the color of this splatter so it stands out a little bit more. So maybe we go to edit fill and we could play around with red if we wanted to. Um, we could also go to edit fill and go with the yellow and try that out. We can also go up to our hue and saturation and we can kind of go through the full gamut. We can make it brighter. We can make it less saturated. We can make it white by bringing up the lightness or dark. So I think I'm going to go with the white and click OK. And then it's just uh, at this point, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, but you can then start kind of tweaking it and making sure everything is as you want it. So might wanna bring this frame down a little bit, and then maybe we play around with the um, positioning of the text. I'd obviously have to add in the text, but I wanna change this into columns because I think it's gonna go better with the position of the frames. You might want to remove some of the text, which you can do by deleting that text, making it a little thinner. Maybe we'll get rid of some of this text too. And so you can kind of play around um, like that to get it to fit. Maybe bring this up a little bit because you don't want your text to be too close to the edge. Otherwise, you'll end up losing um, your text when it goes through the printing process. So maybe we draw this one up. And maybe we bring little Rocky Bear up too, so that he is up here like that. And I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe one last thing I'm gonna do here with this 
text is to go ahead and add a drop shadow. So go to layer, layer style, drop shadow. Um, and that's just going to make that pop a little bit. And you can increase the opacity. You can change the size if you want it to jump off the page a little bit more. You can increase the softness um, and click OK. So I'm pretty much done with that. Any questions about that particular page before we move on? Uh, Charlene says, Anna, when you aren't seeing your previews, it looks like you're in a photos viewer. Yeah, I just switched back and it was working just fine. So I don't know what's going on. I have, it, it's probably a Windows issue. I've just learned to kind of just maneuver around these little problems. They tend to resolve themselves um, as time goes by. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and save this as our first layout. Uh, what do you guys want to see next? I'm going to put it out to you guys. What do you want to see next? What should I play with next? Give you some time to put in the chat box. I've got like too many boxes again. Let's through this across. Save. Okay, a design with dark paper. All right, and that's what we're going to do next. So uh, a couple of dark papers. So we can, um, if you remember, I showed you the dark papers. We've got two. So we can either use the um, artsy paper or we can use the plain design paper. So let's kind of do both. I'm going to create a new layout. 12 by 12 inches at 300 PPI. That's going to create a, um, a standard 12 by 12 foundation. And then I'm going to drag these onto my canvas. Now, incidentally, I am dragging these onto my canvas uh, from their location where they're saved in my files. And I'm going to click on the check mark to place those images. You can also go to file open and navigate to them that way. I just find it easier to drag it in from where I'm working. So I can use this design or I can use this design. If I was creating a custom design, I have different options. I can go to my transfers and overlays. So maybe we bring in a number of these different elements. Sometimes you could just bring a whole bunch of them in. So let's bring in, try a lot of diff different types. Let's bring them all in. <laughs> so you can just kind of bring them all in if you wanted to. Again, click on that check mark and just see which ones work, work best. So I would bring them in and then maybe turn off all of the layers and then maybe kind of turn them on. So I don't love that one. I don't like how this blends down here. Um, so I do it kind of like a process of elimination. This one's pretty fun. I can deal with that one. Um, I like that one and then that one's cool as well. And this one obviously needs to kind of go um, flush against the edges. Maybe we can rotate this if we wanted to. Maybe reorganize the, the layers. So maybe we have that here like this. Um, this one's pretty fun. So maybe we rotate this one. And we can have this one up here like this. So I'm just kind of dragging them around. I'm creating this sort of linear design here. And then this one. Um, so this one's kind of fun. So you can see how the white is sort of, um, it kind of looks like a glow, which I don't mind. But when you when you have these sorts of areas, sometimes it's, it's fun to experiment with whether they look good over the dark areas or whether they look better over a lighter area like that. So I actually quite like that. I like how it sort of comes off um, the edge there. Um, I don't think we need any more transfers. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that one off. And then this paper layer, you can play around with maybe making that one work. I like this edge here um, because it's kind of curvy. So maybe you can align that edge with one of the edges of your transfer I like to apply a linear burn blending mode to these edges. And then if you don't want these parts here, then just grab the eraser tool and just get rid of those. So you're just left with that uh, corner piece or that edge piece here. You see that edge there? 
And you might want to bring it just slightly away so it becomes more visible. So you can customize these transfers by using the eraser tool if you want to. Um, so another splatter element here, but I'm wondering if it might be, sometimes you can have too many splatters um, and too many dots. Um, so I have this one, you can resize these, rotate them if you want to. And again, you can also erase areas. So I don't wanna have these two dots here. So I'm just gonna erase that like that so that we end up having those splatters on the corner there. And then this one here, uh, more splatters. Let's see, rotate them, move them around. This is kind of fun up here. So I like this up here. And you could use the selection tool then to select the other part of that. And I'm just clicking on the space bar, space bar key on my keyboard, and that allows me to pan. Notice how that little hand appears, and so I can move this around. And then if I paste that, then we now have that art stroke and the splatters on two different layers. So that's another way you can split up transfers as well. So maybe we add this here. So this is kind of our basic foundation now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe introduce a, um, a, a photo blends clipping mask. So let's go and find those photo blends clipping masks. Um, so when we're looking at an area, really ideally I wanna place this photo blends or the photo maybe around here or maybe around here. So I'm thinking of kind of maybe a circular or maybe a portrait. Um, so I'm kind of looking at the area that I want my photo to fit. And then I'm dragging this into here. And I can bring this over here like this. So again, I can rotate this. rotate it this way if I wanted to, or I can have it up here. So I kind of like it there because then we can still see that red dot and it adds a little bit of weight to this side. And then let's go ahead and take a look at photos, see what we have here in the way of images. Here's a photo of Eric and I on Christmas, maybe I'll add this. I don't know if it's gonna be the right orientation though, because you can see that this is a um, sort of a, a portrait style. That's also not a very big photo, but it works, maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, it's not gonna work in that spot. So let's find a different photo. I want something a bit more round. Just Christmas photos. Um, let's go back to November and see what we have in there. Lots of pictures of Luke. So maybe I'll use this picture of Luke on his birthday here. Drag this one into... It's not the best photo because it's got this person in the back, but um, he's smiling. So there we go. So we can pop him into our, and I kind of like how the um, transfer in the background sort of comes into his face here. Um, and we'll have to do something with this girl, maybe add some elements over the top of her so we don't see his face. So you can see how it's coming a little bit too much into his eye. So if I select a brush and I just paint on there, then we can just have it coming through the hat area, but not necessarily his face. And I think I want to make this black and white again, because I like how the black and white photos, plus it minimizes this girl in the background here. Maybe not too black and white. Um, I actually like to use the blending modes to, to um, kind of increase the intensity of that photo. We can have overlay, make that dark like that. So that's pretty good. So notice down the bottom here, um, in the same way you can use this 
brush down the bottom here to kind of just um, mark that out. So we've got Luke in the mix. Incidentally, you can also change um, some of these brushes. So you can see the brushes around the edges here. So it might be that this brush at the top here, I quite like how that blends into the top without that stain brush. So maybe I'm gonna take that brush, I'm gonna rotate it, I'm gonna bring it down the bottom here, and that's gonna help contain this area of the image down the bottom. And I can also change the color of that. So if I go to edit fill, ensure that preserve transparency box is checked, and then go to white and click OK, um, then we get a completely different effect. Um, and you can go in and there and you can kind of erase any of the areas that you um, don't want to have in the image like that. And then this time, I think I'm going to go to the art play palette to look for some elements. I'm kind of thinking I want to put elements over the top of this girl's um, that's kind of accidentally photobombing our image or our photograph. And so these are the different elements that come with the art play palette. So um, we have various different labeled words. We have different elements. We have clocks, um, there are bows. So the ones that exist in the folders are ones that have um, drop shadows. So you can see you have a drop shadow layer, you have the element layer, and then you also have the PSD file. And all PSD files you want to bring into the background of your layout design, select the two layers with the move tool, drag the two layers in, and then you can kind of kind of like that you can have you can have a little bow tie so and I like how that aligns with these other lines in the design so um, we're going to do that as soon as it's his birthday and then um, what else are we going to have here there's this fun charm here it's not going to work because he's not really a wine guy but we can have um, these sprinkles this would be fun because it's a birthday celebration so we can maybe add these sprinkles up here and just start thinking about building over this area. So we have those beads, um, glasses, we already have a bow. Um, this isn't gonna be appropriate. Heart's not really gonna be appropriate. So this is where I'm now gonna move once I've kind of exhausted my possibilities there, I have a lot more um, options when I go into the multimedia. So um, we have the clock, we have this frame, um, we have the I love. Um, so maybe I'll bring this one in. We'll see what we have there. We also have, I think, an option in the bonus, which I haven't looked in yet. So the bonus is you get this collection. It's a limited edition. So you only get it as long as the Remem Remembrancer collection is available. And so that's gonna be probably just another two weeks because I'm hoping to release a new collection next week. Um, so there's an element in here which creates um, a fifth multimedia element. Let's bring this one into the background here. Did I manage, oh, I managed to add that one on top of, so this is what happens if you don't bring it into the background and you drag it onto another file, it just becomes a single um, element. So you wanna be careful about that and be really good about closing your files down, which I'm not, um, when you add them. You can see I've got lots of photos in here. Okay, so let's go back and try that again. Now, if I drag this into the background, because I don't already have an image or a file open in the background, you can see now we have all of these different layers, which is really fun. So maybe we we'll wanna add in some of these scatter layers. So this is just the element portion of the, I don't know if I like that, it's maybe too much. There we go, maybe like that. You can even resize them. I think I actually wanna resize some of these, make them a little smaller. And maybe bring this down here over her, over her head. Um, and then also within the bonus, there is um, these different layout ideas. So I show you different ways you can put these element, these layer, uh, these elements together to create five different layouts. You get this bonus uh, paper, paper, which is the one that Joan used in her layout design. And then we also have. Um, extra word art here. So um, make it perfect. Maybe I want this love. 
added in here for Lukey Bear. So we add this in, um, kind of like the idea of placing the circle over the top of the text. So maybe we'll just drop that there for now. And then so there's some other options here. So we've got this confetti element. So maybe we'll add that into the mix. I don't know if I like that. Maybe add this over here like that. And then we've got these different splatters as well. So maybe those can kind of go in, place those behind the beads. But now you can see I've kind of covered up that girl and you don't really notice her very well, um, very much because I've used the paint splatters. Maybe bring this down like this. So I'm just moving these pieces down and I'm kind of creating this diagonal here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a drop shadow to that word art. And then maybe bring in some word, another word art here. Um, so let's go and close these out. And go ahead and see what we have in the other word art. So it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. Inspire joy, the, uh, the best moments, that's kind of fun. So little time. I guess this one, so little time, um, just because I feel like he's just grown up so quickly. He turns 17 this year. I know some of you have been following me since he was a baby. So <laughs> I can imagine how you guys feel about watching him grow up. Um, but yeah, we can bring this in here like this. Let me see. So it's kind of moving things around to make them fit. I don't know if I like that. It's not ideal. Maybe we have to move this over just a little bit. And then I, I think we can move, oh yeah, we can move this over a little bit. So this is where you sort of start nudging these different pieces together. I think I nudged that um, shadow out. So I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to nudge that back in. There we go. And if I add it like that, it, you can see how that splatter kind of dots the eye of time. So that works quite well. And then if I just nudge that a little bit, it'll clear. So yeah, I like that. Um, and then um, I quite, I'm pretty happy. Maybe we add in a transfer there. I always feel like a transfer, one of these word transfers um, helps to mat your design. So what have we got? I can't remember what this one is. This one is scrapbook, keepsake, uh, journal. Let's add the journal one. And incidentally, you can mix and match these different sets. So if you have a, um, a word from a different set that wor works better. So for example, it might be that, let's go ahead and just add this in here, but I like how that looks. You can resize it if you wanted to move it across, but I like how that sort of mats the area and gives you a, a clearer view. But if you have a different collection, such as um, Yuletide, for example, and we go into the Yuletide and we get the holiday word art, then we have Wonder, Pine, and Festive. So Wonder is probably a better fit than the journal. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add that in there instead and kind of mix and match um, and make that work. And then the other thing I think I want to do here is to add in a place for our journaling. So to do that, I'm going to go back to our Remembrancer collection. And um, I like these notebooks. So um, don't worry about these black squares. This is just a, a, a word um, problem, a, a, win, a Windows 10 problem. So you can either drag these in and kind of use them as is. And this works really well if you have a white background. You can see that this black doesn't really show up very well on this background. So what I like to do is select the paintbrush tool from the tools panel, go up to my window and open up the brushes panel. And then if I scroll down to the bottom of my panel and then go ahead and grab the ABR brush, which is this one here. And I can drag that directly into my Photoshop, drag it over to my brushes panel. And then if I scroll down, you can see that that brush is now being loaded into that panel. I can click on the folder and I can access this. So if I invert my colors and I make my foreground white, 
And then I select a brush from here and let's create a new layer because you always want to add a brush to a new layer and add that on like that. Then you can see that now that white is a really nice contrast to um, the black background. And I quite like it. So I'm aligning that circle with this circle here. Um, and then we can go in and maybe type some text. So maybe we're going to add in uh, happy, oops, happy 17th birthday. And maybe I want like a script font. So let's see what I've been using lately. I've got a bunch of different script fonts. We obviously want to make this much larger. And I like the white, or maybe it would be fun to have like a, a really bright color. Um, so you can play around with the color. Maybe go with this bright blue like this. Can't really see it very well though. That's the only problem. So maybe that's not the best idea. Maybe we go with a, a light blue like that. And then play around with a font that kind of fits. So happy. Um, and then maybe you separate this. This is kind of getting, I'm just going to add this in underneath. Oops, I managed to hit the wrong button. So it was birthday. So I could add that in like that. I can maybe make it smaller. The idea being really here is that the, uh, the lines uh, create a guide for um, your text. So I don't know if I love that. Um, maybe we'll go back to my safety, which is I typically like my text in black or white um, and that it's hidden. So maybe we go with white. I really like the idea of that um, of that blue, but I think I'm just going to go with white and call it good because that's my my comfort like that. So yeah, you can use the um, the area and notice too how now we've got these kind of three sort of points. We've got the text, we've got the um, the other text here, and then we've got this up here. Um, and I could actually add another focal point in here if I wanted to add 17th and maybe make that bigger. So I could add that in like that. And if I wanted to add a bright color, I could do that too. So we could add that in. Maybe add a drop shadow to make it stand out. Um, you could also change the font, of course, so that you have different options. Oh, that's a bit too bright now. So yeah, so lots of different ways that you can kind of play around um, by setting your text on there. Alternatively, you can do what um, Joan did. Uh, was it Joan or Darina? I think it was Darina. Um, and you can take the word art. Um, where is it? So we have the word art here and you could take one of these quotes. So um, I don't know if this one's gonna work, but it'll give you, you can take this quote and you can add it up here and then go to image adjustments invert. So in the end, we all become stories. So that's not a bad way to, and I actually like that as well. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna stop there with that one. Okay, uh, see, just any questions about that layout, let me know. Um, So Sandra says, I'd love to, I'd love to see the silver and blue elements on a dark paper layout riffing on Charlene's. Um, so yeah, so that's this layout here. We have this one here. So yeah, that's the silver, uh, silver elements over the dark background. And then, um, Raymond says, you must have rather a fast CPU processor, or is it? I have a, um, a, a Windows PC that um, my husband's built. Um, I would love to explain, except for I really don't have um, information about that because Eric maintains and builds my computers and I'm not very technical. Um, it does help to have a faster computer, but most of the newer computers these days have what you need. If you've downloaded 
the, um, I forget, it's been a while since I wrote it, but if you downloaded the free value pack on the page there, it actually gives you the minimum specifications for running Photoshop and Photoshop elements. If you want to give me and uh, shoot me an email after class, then I'll have Eric respond to it because he's really good with all of that techie stuff. I'm not so great with the PC um, side or the you know, the memory side of things. I know what the minimum requirements are and those are posted on my website. It's not something I kind of keep in mind all the time. Um, but any kind of um, computer with, you know, these days, I think most of them will run Photoshop um, pretty well. Um, Diane says, I love the way you design your backgrounds. I usually have a photo or photos in mind first, and then I want to design the background. If I design the background first, then I have to find the picture. Yeah, there's two different ways of doing it. You can add the picture and then design around it, or you can create the design and then add the photo onto it. And I see that Charlene has um, stepped in and answered the PC question, so or the computer question. So thanks for doing that. Um, and you guys can see the chat, I think. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to go ahead and save this. And um, if you've got any more requests, let me know. I'm going to move on to our final layout. And I think we'll do something with the artsy transfers because we haven't done that yet. So uh, the artsy transfers are different from the uh, transfers that are in the art play palette in that they are only des delivered in um, PSD format. And I do this for a reason, because basically if I created these also in PNG format, so individual PNGs wouldn't work because you wouldn't know how to assemble them. Um, and uh, if I created them in just flat PNGs, um, it kind of defeats the purpose of having the RC transfer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring a couple of these in. I like the look of this one. So I'm gonna drag this one into my workspace and then maybe we'll take a look. So these are quite large files. So typically I will have, um, I will have them in three different folders. And again, that's to allow it, to make it much easier for you guys to download those to your computer. Um, and so this one's kind of fun too. So I've got three um, artsy transfers. And then I'm gonna start with a foundation. So we'll create a new layout foundation and we'll go in and look for a background. So we have to go back to our papery for that. Um, so maybe this one's kind of fun with this. So typically what I'll do, um, like I did previously, is I'll bring in multiple papers. Um, I won't just kind of uh, limit myself to a single paper. I'll have a couple of different options and then I'll start adding in maybe some of the transfers. So we can add this one here, close this out. Um, Maybe add this one in too. So the, uh, one of the tips I have for you for artsy transfers is, um, is to kind of keep them in groups if you can. So when you've added one transfer, go to layer and then group layers, and that's gonna organize this into groups so that that way you don't get the layers all mixed up. So when I bring this layer in, it's gonna go on the top and you can see then we can go to layer group layers. And then it just helps to kind of keep those layers organized. Otherwise, you can end up with all of these different layers um, and it can get a little bit tricky to, um, to keep track of them all. Um, so that's just something that I personally like to do. Um, so you could kind of put that over there like this. Um, and then you don't have to use like a complete transfer if you don't want to. You can actually use different parts. So if I might wanna just bring in this, for example, and add this over like that. Um, so you can just use uh, single pieces. Here's that silver transfer that I think Charlene used um, over her bird element. So you could add that into the mix if you wanted to. I don't know if I love that. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that layer off. Uh, maybe we'll add in this blue layer. That's kind of fun. 
that's a photo glow. So you can add these layers in sort of individually if you want to. You add this down here, add this in, add this in. Um, trying to grab this text layer here. Add this in, this kind of looks like a bunny rabbit. It looks like a little bit of a... And then um, these, this collection has these fun sort of plume elements in the mix here. Um, but I also have these other plume elements, which are pretty fun to play with. So again, you can go in and access the hips of plumes 32. You can drag that brush set into your brushes panel. And so when I do that, if I scroll down, it shows me the different options I have there. And then with that brush tool selected, I can then take these different brushes, uh, recommend you create new layers, obviously, and you can add these brushes into the mix as well. Um, so, and if you don't like the color of that, you can undo it or you can recolor it. Maybe in this case, I'll add this black in here like that. So you can add that into the mix like that. Um, this is kind of fun, this number at the top here, I can grab that. So notice I am um, with the move tool selected, I'm kind of clicking on this auto select button. You can also click on the control or the command, uh, control or is it control? Yeah, it's the control or the command key, isn't it? In, in a Mac, I think it's the control key. Yeah, it's the control or the command key. And if I click that on and off, it's gonna um, check that auto select box. And then that allows me to select different parts of this. Um, and so, cause what happens is, is otherwise it, it will just click on the, top, on, the, on the layer that you're kind of selecting. Um, so you have to kind of move it around. So it just helps to have that feature. I'm gonna add this down the bottom here. Uh, is there anything else we wanna add here? Oh, it was this, I was trying to grab this here. So maybe we add that in like that, maybe rotate it slightly. So yeah, so we've got a nice little foundation here using those artsy transfers. We used uh, three different types of artsy transfers in order to do that and close those files out. Um, and then we can go in. Sometimes instead of using a photo blends clipping mask, I like to use transfers. So maybe we bring in, it really depends on the actual transfer, but I'm gonna bring this one in and just see Place this over the top here and then go ahead and select a photo. Maybe we go back into October. Oh, October was fun. We went to Flagstaff. So um, we'll go back into September. It's looking something that was... Um, I've just used all of these photos to create my project. So um, I really need to download the new photos from my phone. Um, so maybe we'll have, um, maybe we have this picture of me, maybe smiling. So I'll have this picture of me smiling and we'll add this into the mix and we'll see if we can kind of, it's not the best image of me, um, but sometimes by this can work. So when you have a not so great image, but, you still want to use it. Sometimes this can work. Now I don't necessarily love this white in the background because um, it's overshadowing uh, the actual photo. Um, but I do kind of like how you can't see fully my face. <laughs> I like how that's hidden. Um, so another thing you can do here too is, so you can paint directly on that. But the other thing you can do too is you can duplicate this transfer and you can go and merge them down. And then you can go back to create clipping mask and that's gonna bring in a little bit more. And then now I've done that, maybe I'll go in with a brush. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and grab the brushes from the art play palette um, because all art, and I, I always underuse these um, unless I have them in my panel, but you have all of these available to you. So instead of using the same old brushes, 
you can maybe go ahead and use some of these art play palette brushes. So like there's this fun brush here with the text in it. And so that allows me to kind of go straight on there like that. Um, and again, these colors are all very warm and this is much more cool. So I'm gonna desaturate this and then curve it up. That's always a good way to improve a photo. So that's actually not half bad in the end. Whoops, I managed to delete that just then. Um, and then maybe add a overlay or a soft light, even a color burn and bring down the opacity. So I quite like the bright white there on that. Um, so let's go with that. So that's using a transfer as a clipping mask, as opposed to using a photo blend, which is fun. Um, and as we've got these brushes out here, let's go ahead and just add a couple more. So there's this fun brush here, this black one there, and there's um, we've got this one in brush format. This is pretty neat too. Let's see what we can do with this. So I'm creating new layers. Um, if I'm going to add a blending mode to a brush, then I'll usually stamp it in gray instead of black. And then you can see as I go down the different effects that I get. So I quite like that linear burn. So we can add that into the background. If you wanted to kind of clean it up, you can do that too and have it contained within that image. What else have we got down here? I move this out the way. This down. Uh, this is fun, like little box area. I have no idea what I just did with my layers panel. Must have closed out. So new layer here. And I need to reselect my brush tool. So sometimes I'll just stamp a brush on the canvas and then I'll move it around to sort of find the best fit for it. So maybe that can go here. And then you can also play around with the color once you've stamped it on, then you can go to edit fill. Um, make sure you have that preserve transparency box checked. And then you can maybe sample a color from your layout and click okay. And that's gonna soften it and change the blending mode. Um, so that's kind of another way you can kind of use brushes. You don't necessarily have to know um, how it's all going to kind of pan out. And then I wonder what this is because sometimes you can't really see them very well. So sometimes it's helpful just to add that, you know, stamp it. And sometimes it looks good. I kind of like how that looks. So, and that was completely random accident. Okay, so now I've got a little bit of um, kind of brushwork on there. I'm going to go ahead and select um, a title. Let's do the title first. Um, a storyteller, inspire joy. I like that. I like to inspire joy. So we we'll add that in there and that fits quite nicely. And then it seems to make sense that I would use the create prompt here. So maybe add that down there like that. Go to layer, layer style, drop shadow. Add that, I'm just gonna keep the drop shadow as is there. Um, Scrapbooker, that's perfect. So we're gonna add that into the mix. We obviously want to move that behind those two other words like that. And we can play around with the placement. It might be better to bring that up a little bit like that. And I think I actually want to bring in this, um, this word art too. So this is delivered in two different formats too. You, you can either just use the PNG file or if you wanted to make um, edits to this, for example. So if you own previous sets, then you're gonna have other words. So it might be that you wanna add an E and an R to add scrapbooker in there. Um, it might also be that you want to maybe remove some of these and just have scrap. Um, so it's kind of up to you um, how you want to adjust those. I'm going to go ahead and just add in that scrap. And kind of figure out a way that I can kind of get it to fit like that. So now I've got this, um, these words in place. I'm going to bring this up to the top. I kind of feel like here is a good place to add the elements. 
Um, so that's kind of where I'm going with this. So let's go and take a look at our multimedia elements. And this time I'm going to bring in this one. We brought it in last time, but I don't think I ended up using it. And I don't really want the urban threads, so maybe we turn that off. Um, I don't know if I want the key. Maybe I do want the keys, but I want the keys maybe separate. So we'll bring the keys down here and make it look like it's threaded through the thread down the bottom here. And we can turn that off. And then I'm just going to bring in the actual elements, so the donut and the eye. Bring that here like this. Um, and then if I wanted to add in the black and white splatters, I could maybe add those down the bottom here and make sure I bring them behind those key elements. Go ahead and turn that off. So we don't want to save it. So I'm going to click no, close this out. And then um, if I wanted to add in some lines for some journaling, if I wanted to add some lines kind of back here would be a good place to put that. So if I go back and I look for more of a kind of a, a portrait. So this one was kind of very landscape style. I'd want something just a little bit kind of thinner, skinnier like that, for example. Uh, something that's going to kind of fit in that place. And if I rotate it slightly, it's going to align with that other brushwork. So I can kind of play around and find the best fit for that. You can even have it so it looks like it's um, underlying the other text. So it just depends on how functional you want it to be and whether you want to actually use it for words or not. Um, you could also have it down the bottom here, maybe a different one. Let's go ahead and try this one, for example. So that one's kind of fun. I like that down the bottom there. But I think I just messed up and I added it to the same layer. So that's the advantage of adding different layers is, is that you can then modify them. So I think I prefer that down there. Maybe rotate it just slightly, just so it's on an angle. And then I could go in and I can kind of type my text down the bottom there. Um, but that pretty much concludes that layout, I think. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Make sure your backgrounds cover the background of your layout design. Go ahead and save that. And I think I'm pretty much done. Um, any questions about that layout? Any comments, concerns? There you go. Liz says, really cool layout, thank you. And Maggie says, I think it's a cute photo of you. I don't think it's the best image of me. I've kind of got my eyes half closed, <laughs> but that's okay. But it just goes to show you how you can make a photo that you don't really love very much better um, by you know adding them to the, the, the supplies. Um, and then grouping the transfer is very interesting. I'll try that as I'm currently using a lot of transfers. Yeah, I find it really helpful to group them. Um, it just helps to kind of keep the layers together and keep your uh, panel organized. Um, so yeah. Um, and then Liz says she's not so keen on the dark gray background, but love using the artsy transfers so versatile. Excellent. Okay, well, I will see you guys um, in a few weeks. Hopefully, I will have a new art play palette for you guys soon. Uh, for those of you who like to join the AA Connect, I will see you hopefully next week. Um, and I hope you really love this collection. It was really fun for me to create. It was one of those different ones that um, kind of popped into my head, and I thought this would be um, a really a really neat way to for you to be able to document your um, scrapbooking and yourself. So don't forget to take pictures of yourselves and um, include them, even if they're bad ones, include them, <laughs> include them in your pages. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.